Howdy, everybody. Dr. Lena here. Well, here we are. We're still waiting for a result of the vote. I went to bed last night in Australia thinking, oh, it's going to be complicated, probably a couple of votes. But when I wake up in the morning, it'll be all sorted out one way or another. May not. I know, isn't it hilarious? Isn't it juicy? Isn't it bliss to watch it unfolding? You know. And the only thing we're certain of is Kevin McCarthy's utter humiliation. Having moved all his things into the office and all his people saying, just stay there, you know. They are eating themselves alive on prime time. Apparently, Fox is in meltdown, right? You know. So be it. I mean, having said all that, of course, it's quite serious if there isn't a speaker elected in terms of being able to, um, you know, fulfil government functions. But, hell, it would seem to me that people stopped governing in 2016. So I don't think this is a new state and we've had the Dems now being the grown-ups and actually introducing, oh, heaven forbid, a policy and a big policy and more than one policy. And now it's back to this chronic dysfunction, you know. Look, may it play out as it may, really, truly. So this is going to be very short today because I, for one, and I'm sure most of you will want to get back and look at the next instalment. Yeah. Now. I've got a few topics, but not many because so much has been going on with the shift. Um, have you noticed the shift in energy that is happening around this? You know, oh, it's an exhausting business just staying across it all. But meanwhile, we can't help but be happy with these vicious, vile, vacuous Republicans sinking the ship. There's not enough words starting with B, are there? Banal. They're awful, awful. But I want to know what Trump's thinking about it. And um, I just did a collab with Celtic Sheila, um, but I want to take a different angle on it now. With What's happening with the party? Trump's view of what's happening. May the Yeti. Look. Oh, no, I don't think the Yeti is actually even engaged. Probably we should not be surprised. It's not about him, therefore it doesn't exist. You know, the net, the Yeti is nothing if not focused and it's all about me. So he's sort of on the side. I don't think he sleeps. I don't think he's had a sleep since 1974, but symbolically he's not commenting. I've got no idea because I wouldn't look at Truth Social if you paid me $1,000 a minute, but this is him. Now, this is interesting. I'm going to pull a clarifier on this. This is my GOP um, happy days card, fake families, all of this energy. So it, it's sort of bringing to my attention the way Republican voters are looking at this. Okay, as McCarthy, I'll just finish this first, then I'll go back to the Ten of Cups. McCarthy's certainly wounded, and from the Yeti's perspective, this is a victory for him. Let me just have a quick look at this Ten of Cups. Yeah. You know, let's see. This is, these are interesting cards. This is for ordinary GOP voters. This is the card of thinking. That would be a novelty, wouldn't it? 
you know, this is cradle to grave Republicans we're talking here. So they're thinking and they're actually quietly in despair. They thought this was their golden moment. They'd gone out and voted and they'd managed to get them over the line, but they're actually in despair. But the Yeti sees this as a victory for him. And I think as I was chatting on the the other collaboration, I had this flash and I thought this his argument is going to be that things were stable when I was around. What a bad joke, but I'm looking at it through the lens of the Yeti. He was saying, look at the great things we did when I was there. And so to, to voters who do not think and only consume news in their silo that was pro-Yeti, they think the man, in fact, accomplished something. I mean, short of dividing the nation, he didn't go near anything. He didn't build the wall. He didn't bring back steel. He didn't bring back any of the major industries, certainly not manufacturing continued to make money, as we know from the tax returns in China, he accomplished nothing and yet he's going to spin it like this is a victory for him. And the other thing I'll tell you for nothing is I bet he calls it the Patriot Party. You can always pull out the P word and get a handful of incels with guns on your side. Go the Yeti. Okay, now I want to have a look at Putin. Russia has taken enormous losses in terms of troops. What else has happened is Finland is on the brink of joining NATO. Croatia has joined NATO. So that leaves the UK out on a limb. The UK let me tell you, is on its knees. It would be sad um, if I thought of it in those terms, but I don't. This is what happens with the mass misinformation campaign that was given to Brits. And they were told every time they walked out their door, there was a red bus going past with hundreds of millions of pounds will go into our health service every week. We just have to vote for Brexit. And now they're losing power and influence, but people are really feeling it. You know, their bills are enormous. The country's unstable. Um, things can't come through, which is what we all said four years ago about Brexit. If you cut yourself off from the EU, it means every banana, every umbrella that comes into the country from somewhere else has to go through all this paperwork and customs. And now they're amazed. There's paperwork and customs. Nobody told us. Oh, anyway, so Putin's worst nightmare was having countries close to Russia linked to NATO. And what's happened is he's actually guaranteed extra countries are looking to NATO. And the Yeti himself, who single-handedly tried to dismantle NATO, not that he knew what it was, but he was told to do it, so he went, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, NATO's stronger than it has been for the last 25 years. Anyway, let's look at Putinska. All right. And, of course, more oligarchs are falling out of windows, you know, Okay. I'm the Empress Mother Russia. Yes. Well, he's clinging on, clinging on to power and personal wealth, but, but that's as much as he can manage. So here you have symbolically the Empress of Russia. Um, Putin's thrust always was to bring back the greatness of the empire that he felt was lost with the dismantling of the Soviet Union. So he rewrote history. He prioritised the recolonization. Let's not dress it up. It was colonisation of other states, whether it's Crimea, Ukraine, Georgia, Kazakhstan, you know, 
all the stars. So this was that. But he's heavily restricted now, the Hierophant, government, law and order. And lest we forget, what's today? The 4th of January here, 3rd for you guys. The Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox Christmas is on the 7th. And I have a strong feeling it's going to be symbolic. But he has constraints on his power now. The world is involved. And let's face it, most of us are in awe of Ukraine and the Ukrainian people in the modern world seeking to defend their country on the front line, men and women on the front line. And I think what it's done is make many people in many countries think, God, we're a bit soft. Would we do the same? You know, they have come from having a modern lifestyle to being behind sandbags and fighting for their own survival. Um, and the world has, by and large, sided with Ukraine. Now, this has implications for Putin too, who's used to um, affluence and comfort, literally. He's now being denied affluence and comfort. He's still got enough money he's holding on to this because, of course, he'd have bank accounts everywhere from Seychelles, Cyprus, you know, up the wazoo, but he's clinging on. But for him... He's got big problems because the world is not on his side, including India and China, who have always been allies. And at the beginning, um, they showed their allegiance to Russia by just saying nothing. Now they're actually drifting away. So isolation, isolation, isolation for him. So... Looking at 2020, just going more optimistically for a minute about 2023 and how to handle it and what's ahead generally. Let me have a look here. Oh, a friend of mine who owns, uh, we call it a property, you'd call it a ranch in the bush, but he doesn't have cattle or anything. It's just a big piece of land. Um. He had the koala rescue people come in and if you want to provide sanctuary for koalas, you apply to this organisation. They bring in koala dogs. I didn't even know there was such a thing as a koala dog. So they suss out if there are already koalas on your property and if there are, like my friend, they will send in the volunteers to plant thousands of trees that are koala friendly on your property. So I was thrilled to hear that. What a wonderful thing to do. Oh, bless the koalas. Where I was born was a big place for koalas. Oh, bless. Now, 2023 more generally, a message for you guys, and I want to thank you again for deluging Mary Trump with positive comments and I will get back and let you know when I'm going to be on. And that'll be with no cards. It will be as a political commentator. So I will get back to you on that. So what do we have to look out for? What is the good news? Oh, I just heard Supreme Court. Why am I hearing Supreme Court? Let me just do a quick read on the Supreme Court and we get back to 2023. Remind me. Supreme Court. Maybe it's the Supreme Court in 2023. Oh, what's going on here? Nothing supreme about the Supreme Court. Oh, God. All right. Oh, sorry. Supreme Court. I like that, like that, like, oh, wow, okay, pulled five cards, three are the big guns, major arcanas, and the first one, I'm always thrilled, the 
best of America. Star. Now, this, we shouldn't be surprised, the Wheel of Fortune keeps turning up in all sorts of contexts, in all sorts of readings. Why? Because it's the card of karma, fate and destiny. But before I move on, let me digress yet again, intrepid viewers. I've never been a fan of thinking of karma as sort of like an accounting book, bad things, bad things happen, good things, good things happen. I think it's a, an underlying principle of energy transfers and magnifies in a particular direction rather than punishment or something. But why I think it's important here is with the Wheel of Fortune, the mermaid figure is, signifies movement. It is turning. They have got away with so much to the point where they had such public trust at the beginning of this process. During the Yeti, it started to go down and now it's plummeted. It's something like 17% of Americans think the Supreme Court's trustworthy. Shocking. They've cut their own throats. They've dismantled the trust in this institution. Yeah. Foolishly, but both renderings of the fool, they have been foolish allowing this to happen, but now there's going to be a new beginning. We have a Queen of Wands coming in here. So it's going to be one of the women or symbolically the women one wouldn't immediately think of Amy Comey Barrett or whatever her name is, would you, you know, as being positive for women, you know, the weirdest, probably the second weirdest woman in the world. Well, you've got to leave room for someone else, you know, like, but definitely weird. No, not her. Um, could be the ghost of Ruth Bader, Bader Ginsburg. But this is a very powerful woman. Yeah. This could even be someone who is not on the Supreme Court but it galvanises the public perception yeah. of it, that it must change and they must compromise. I saw during the week Neil Gorsuch, who's not known as a left-wing radical, being very critical of the court's conduct. So they're going to have to compromise in 2023 and reduce the, the worst of their excesses. So I think I think it was a shock when those polls started coming out. I think that was a shock. So let's hope we see some improvement in the Supreme Court. Okay, back to I'm going to pull some cards for you guys for 2023. Things we should be alert to, advice for. Sorry if you can hear the background noise. I've got a full house at that time of year. Okay. All right. Let's see what's happening here. 2023 for intrepid viewers. 2023. Okay. Well, that's oh, look, I shuffled and shuffled and shuffled. Here it is again. All right, well, there's lots of work ahead, right? Now, it starts with the Eight of Cups. I think it helps to, to relate these cards to each other, which is if you're learning tarot, it's really important to look at the relationship between the cards. Okay. I'll do this manually. Some some readers are infinitely more dexterous than I am and can do it in a really impressive way. I can't. Okay. So it's walking away from the worst of the worst, possibly, but it's also see all the cups are up with the eight of cups. It's doing things your way. This person isn't being driven out. They're deciding to turn their back, probably on the chaos and the filth that is modern politics. Okay. 
it's again this fateful time in history. People will look, excuse me, look back on history and talk about these years a lot. People have been feeling burdened by the discord, the drama, the hate that's been allowed out, out of the genie's lamp, the unleashing by the Yeti of intolerance and hatred. People have been very ground down by it. But leaving that behind, we all need to find our inner hermit. Okay, now the hermit is about higher learning. So um, if you could find a way to study, particularly if you don't have to incur a monstrous five and six figure debt to do it, higher learning takes many forms and it doesn't have to be um, a straight college degree. This is about learning about ourselves individually, looking for the light, right? So your own personal depths, because this is important. You are in for the long haul. We've got two more years to go to the next election. So everyone has to be in good condition because there is a great deal of work to be done. And with this, this is the apprentice card, all jokes aside, getting better at what you do. So you see what I mean about the, if you take some quiet time and some think, thinking time, um, you will benefit from this enormously. And the challenge with the Eight of Pentacles is what can you do? Because, you know, with these feelings of being burdened and, oh, and it's all too much and what can I do and I don't matter and it's all terrible and we're all going to hell in a handbasket is not useful. It's really not useful to you personally and it's certainly not useful to the collective. We have arrived here, I believe, as people who have some sort of insight into this community. So what does that mean for you? Okay. If you've got enough money to donate to a good organisation, donate. If you don't have much money or you've got time, you can donate a few hours a week or even a few hours a month to an organisation you think is doing good work. This is working step by step, local. Remember the old saying, think global, act local. What can you do in your local community to make things better? That might be... Um, donating food to a homeless shelter or it could be animal rescue or it could be in um, getting involved in your kids or your grandkids local school so that the school boards aren't all stacked with mag and nut cases what does it mean for you and what can you do because if you're active it changes your impressions and it changes your um, it changes your vibe, for want of a better word, but it lifts your frequency and then you're more engaged and you're more likely to meet people of like mind so you don't feel you're alone as a blue dot in a red sea or whatever. You actually start to meet more people who think like you and I'm thinking back, you know, having been active in the 70s, I was too young for the 60s. I don't say too young often, so I will claim the 70s. By going to a demonstration, the buzz was just immense. It would carry on for weeks and weeks, even months afterwards, and get inspired. So even though street protests have fallen away, oh, I do miss them, um, there are other forms of protesting. Uh, you can be a keyboard warrior. So I think your 2023 goal is what can I do to be part of the solution? What can I do to visualise a better, fairer world? Because unless people are working towards that, it's all about shying away from the horrors and what's been lost, that five, five, oh, we've lost this right, we've lost that right. It will turn around. I think historically we're due for a pendulum swing and I think 2023 is the beginning. So, guys, 
I will be back before you know it. So you take care. And this turned out to be longer than I expected. But big love to all of you. Ciao for now.